Hi everybody. I recently came across this map of Iran and I really like the parchment effect. This is a good way to add some visual appeal to historical maps, so in this video I'll walk through the steps of creating it. The base map for this project is pretty simple. Country borders, cities, rivers, and geographical areas. This map doesn't include shaded relief, so I don't need a DEM file. I'll use natural earth vector data and load it into QGIS. The files are in the download link in the video description so you can follow along. I'll rearrange the layers in this order from top to bottom. Populated places, rivers, lakes, countries, land, and ocean. Now I'll change the projection to World Mercator and set the countries layer to No Brush to only show the borders. The colors don't matter at this point. We'll change them in Illustrator. Next, I'll turn on the Cities layer. The original map only shows cities in Iran, plus a few in other countries, so I need to separate them. First, I'll filter the data to separate the Iranian cities by right-clicking on the layer and selecting Filter. The Query Builder window will appear. See my two videos about attributes for a fuller explanation of filtering a data set. The attribute I need for countries is ADM0 name, and the value is Iran. So I'll enter ADM0 name equals Iran into the expression field, then click OK. Here's what that does. Only Iranian cities are shown now. I want to save this as a shapefile, so I'll right-click on the layer and go to Export Save Features As to save the file. Set the CRS to Project CRS. Now I have a new layer with just Iranian cities. Next I need the non-Iranian cities. First, I'll remove the filter I applied in the last step to show all of the cities by going back to the filter and clicking on Clear. I only need about 8 of these cities, so I'll open the Attribute table for the Cities layer to find the attribute I need. The attribute this time is Name. To make it easier to find the ones I need, I'll click on the Name column to sort them alphabetically, then I'll select the ones I need by clicking in the left column for that city. Hold down the Command or Control key and click to select non-contiguous rows. Once they're all selected, Save the selection by right-clicking on the layer and using Export Save Selected As. Turn off the original Cities layer and your map should now show only the cities you need. Next, I'll change the city markers to a small black dot and I'll add labels. I'll be adding different city markers in Illustrator, so for now I only need them to mark the locations. And that's all I'm going to do in QGIS. I'll adjust the map in the main window to show the area I want, and export it as an SVG. I've opened the SVG file in Illustrator and done the usual things. Rename the layers, delete the bounding boxes, and save it as an AI file. I also locked most of the layers for now just to be safe. I'll turn off the city and label layers and work on the parchment effect first. I'll add a new layer for the parchment and arrange the layers like this. We'll need a parchment image. These are easy to find online. Freepick.com has a lot of good ones. Here I'm showing a quick search. I've included some of these in the file download listed in the description. You can use a single image or combine several in Photoshop and adjust the opacity and blend modes to get what you want. It's up to you. If you combine images in this way, make sure to flatten the file and save it as a PSD. Back to Illustrator. I'll place the parchment image into its layer. 
Make sure it covers the entire map area. Scale it if needed. I'll fix the oceans first. I'll select the oceans layer by clicking to the right of the circle and change the fill color to BBBDAB, then set the blend mode to color. Next, I'll select the rivers layer and set the color to 95A6A3. Now I'll duplicate the lakes layer and set the bottom one to a fill of BBBDAB and color blend mode. Then I'll select the top layer and set it to a stroke of 95A6A3 with no fill, using normal blend mode. I did this because I want the fill and stroke to use different blending modes. That looks good for now. Next, I'll select the Country Borders layer and change the stroke color to D9CEB2 and the Multiply Blend mode. Now for the Cities. I'll turn the Cities layer on. The City markers are too big. Instead of going back to QGIS to change their size, I can scale them in Illustrator. First, there's really no reason to keep the Iran and non-Iran city separated, so I'll click on both layers and merge them. I'll do the same with the city label layers. Now I'll select the cities layer and ungroup twice. This is important. When the ungroup command is dimmed, you're good to go. With the cities still selected, go to Object, Transform, Transform Each. This window will appear. Set both of the scale sliders to 40% and click OK. Here are the cities now. That's perfect. I'll be creating my own city markers, so I only need the original ones as a guide, but I wanted to make sure they were small enough to be covered up by the new markers. The original map used four different sizes of city markers, corresponding, I assume, with population. The labels are also sized the same way. There is a way to do this in QGIS, but it's really complicated and I haven't been able to figure it out. Instead, I'll just eyeball it. First, I need to create four markers. The original map markers are circles with a fill of BC546F and a black stroke, so I'll draw that in four different sizes. Instead of placing these on the map by themselves, I'm going to add a generic label for each one. Since the label sizes correspond to the marker sizes, this will speed up the process and ensure that each marker has the correct label size. Here's what I came up with. The font is Adobe Caslon Bold, and the sizes are 12, 10, 8, and 7 points. I'll put these on my map and move them into the correct positions, using the original city markers as a guide, then change the labels to the correct city names. A few cities, Baghdad, Doha, Tehran, use a different symbol, so I'll add that now. Next, I'll add some area labels. Most of these use a large letter spacing, and some of them are on a curve. I used all caps for these and a medium gray color. On the original map, Iran has a yellow tint to set it off from the surrounding area. To do this, I'll select the Iran boundary, and I'll give it a yellow fill. That's too dark because we set the boundary layer to multiply blend mode earlier. I want to use the color blend mode for this, so I'll undo that fill I just did, and duplicate the boundary layer, and rename the new layer Iran Fill. Then I'll select the layer and set it to normal blend mode with a yellow fill and no stroke. It looks like this. Lock all of the layers except the Iran Fill one and deselect, then click on Iran with the Direct Selection tool and go to Select Inverse. This selects everything except Iran. And now I'll delete. Here's what's left. Now I'll set this to Color Burn Blend Mode and reduce the opacity to 80%. That looks good. The original map uses concentric line shading for the water areas, so I'll add that now. First, I'll duplicate the ocean layer and move it above the existing ocean layer. I'll select this layer and set no fill and a blue-gray stroke of 0.5 points, 
and I'll set this layer to normal blend mode. Note, the width to use for the stroke depends on the size of your map. Experiment with different widths. While I have this stroke selected, I'll set the stroke alignment to center and the corner to round join. I'll zoom in here so you can see it better. With the layer selected, go to Object Path Offset Path. The Offset Path window will appear. Here's where we specify the spacing for the first concentric line. Since we're working with the ocean layer, the lines will be coming back into the ocean area. This means we need to use negative values for the spacing. I'll start with a value of minus one point, and I'll set the joins to round, then click OK. The line will be added and selected. Don't deselect it or you'll have to start over. The general idea for the spacing is that the lines should be close together near the land, then gradually become spaced farther apart. Since my first line image is still selected, I'll repeat the process, this time increasing the spacing to minus 1.5 points. For the next one, I'll use minus 2 points for the spacing, and then a final one spaced at minus 2.5 points. And we're done. I think the lines are a little stronger than I like, so I'll select that layer and reduce the opacity to 50%. That looks better. And we're done. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.